one, I'm Doc. And I am Indigo Moon. And together we are the Psychic Realm of Secret Magic. Today, Indigo, we're going to talk about pendulums, pendulums. Uh, a little bit about the history and how to use them. And uh, you've really come up with some interesting facts about uh, the pendulum. Well, you know, I do love my research. Yes, you do. Yes, I no, do. No doubt about that. <laughs> uh, pendulums um, have been used for centuries and centuries. Uh, and so I really wanted to understand where the first pendulum came from, when it was used. Uh, and who I found was Pythia. Uh, she was a priestess uh, in Greek times. Mm -hmm. And she worked, I guess, at the um, sanctuary or temple of Apollo. Mm -hmm. And they call it the Oracle of Delphi. That's what she was called. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they worshiped the Greek god Apollo. And she channeled prophecies from Apollo himself, or so she said. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And you have some information of how she did that. Well, the interesting thing is the temple of, uh, uh, of Apollo there in, in Delphi was built over a um, fissure in the earth. And uh, there were some fumes that came up from uh, somewhere deep into the earth. Um, and they were uh, had little... Uh, hallucinogenic properties oh. and so uh, as part of her process she would sit somewhere in the inside the temple and she would inhale these fumes and um, go into a bit of an altered state uh, and then she would bring forth her prophecies from uh, the god Apollo uh, but apparently she used a pendulum as well mm -hmm. To uh, as part of her one of her tools in, in their divination. Yep, yep. She did use a, a pendulum. They didn't show it or anything, so I can't you know tell, show you or tell you what it looked like. Um, but I do wish my house was built over a, a fissure like that. <laughs> that would be nice. We are recording that, from my house in Nebraska today. Uh, we're sitting outside because it's a lovely day. A beautiful day a beautiful here beautiful in Omaha. Day. So, yeah. uh, we're enjoying it. Hope you're enjoying it. And please, uh, if you're enjoying the the, the programs that we uh, we put on YouTube, please subscribe. Uh, the only way our channel can grow is if everyone, nice people like you, subscribe to our channel. And uh, by all means, if you have any comments, please put uh, send your comments. We would love to see them and hear about them. And um, in fact, the reason why we're doing the pendulum show is because someone had um, asked about pendulums. Mm -hmm. A client of mine uh, came and watched the videos, liked them, subscribed, and commented that he would like a, a show on pendulums. So that is why we are doing that today. Um, now, the Temple of Apollo was the god. He is actually the god of music, harmony, light, healing, and uh, oracles. Oh, that's very nice. So anybody who's an oracle, anybody who's a prophesier, can actually um, worship Apollo. Well, he can yeah. be one of your gods. He can be one of your spirit guides, your higher, uh, higher masters. Yes, without question. No so, doubt. No doubt. Mm -hmm. But the the interesting thing is that pendulums, uh, even though that's the first recorded use of the pendulum, people have used pendulums for centuries. They have. Um, if you look at um, uh, many of the, uh, in fact, if you look at the way the Egyptians built uh, their pyramids and their temples, mm -hmm. they used a pendulum because it helped enable them to see something that was straight. Mm -hmm. They did. The, uh, the Egyptians did, the Romans did, and the Greeks did. They all used pendulums. Um, and as we can see, it goes, but it goes back further than that. Mm -hmm. It does. So. Um, even though this was kind of the first recorded written history, they do still have other examples of people using pendulums uh, before that. Mm -hmm. Now, is it important to use only one particular type of pendulum? No, it's not, although I have found that the best pendulum will be one that you made yourself. Oh, okay. All right. It can be made out of anything whether it be a necklace that you wear every day, uh, a seashell. As a matter of fact, I do have an example of that in that box. Find the seashell. Here. So I have this one. I don't know if you can see that really well. Come back to me, camera. There we go. 
and I made this myself. I put, I found the seashell and I wrapped it in wire. I made the chain even with the crystals hanging on it. And this is one of the ones that I use all the time because I tend to find that it is the most honest with me. Uh, pendulums can be very dishonest or lie to you and it can be that you're lying to yourself. It's very important when you're using the, the pendulum to make sure that it is, you get your ego out of the way. Uh, because the pendulum will lie to you and many times what you will get is um, it will tick, if you ask a pendulum a question it will start off no and then maybe stop and go back to yes then maybe go back to no again and that is usually an indication that either either you're not grounded very well or you are putting too much ego into the you want a specific answer rather than allowing your higher self to move through the pendulum. Mm -hmm. Now pendulum divination is also called a couple of different words, names. Okay. Um, radiesthesia. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's a hard word. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. I had to say it a few times in order to let it roll off the tongue. Radiesthesia. Okay. Of course, it's also called dowsing. Mm -hmm. um, and dowsing can also be rods. Yeah, pendulums that really are a cousin to the dowsing rods, and those were uh, dowsing rods were used uh, back during the uh, the Great Depression because there was so much dry ground. Uh, people used dowsing rods in order to found or uh, witches. I believe they were called the uh, uh, witches of some sort. Yeah, actually, uh, water witching. Water witching. That's right, and they would look for uh, sources of water on ranches and farms. So. Um, very wide use of the pendulum and the dowsing rods. So, on the Silk Road, they used uh, dowsing rods a lot to find water along the way in the desert. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So they would stop in an area and they would go travel both sides of the road and find water and dig a short uh, well, so to speak, and then they would get their water. They'd feed their camels and themselves. And then they would go on and they would do that. They would also mark places on the road where they had found water. Oh, very interesting. So that very other travelers that came through wouldn't have to work so hard. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, in divination using the pendulum today, um, you can buy commercial pendulum mats. Uh, they'll show you yes, uh, where yes is and where no is. Uh, but you can make these yourself, and, and pro I think probably the, the, the best place to, to get started, the best way to get started with the pendulum, is to simply hold it, and uh, Indigo is going to show you a, a, a pendulum. I was looking for one specifically, but now I can't find it. But anyway, you simply hold the pendulum and allow it to hang down, and um, simply start in your mind start saying yes and continue to say yes until you see which direction the pendulum actually begins to swing and for you that is always will always be your yes answer let's show them how to properly hold a pendulum okay. though. all right um it is important to be grounded so make sure you clear your mind um you have a little prayer maybe or a little saying for protection because we do want um, this is no better than a ouija board um, and so there are negative energies that can come through. We don't want to connect with those negative energies. We want to connect with the higher uh, light energies. Um, so to have a little prayer, you can say anything like, please protect me, uh, put a white bubble around me, you know, whatever it is that you want to say. Uh, it is important just to protect yourself every time and to ground yourself every time. And it's important to do this, if you will, in a, a your sacred space. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you're um, in your home, make it a sacred space. Yes. Uh, but nature is a really good place to do this because you are automatically protected. Uh, outside, you are automatically protected. So um, that's part of the reason why we came outside today was to have the protection of the earth. Of the earth. Yeah. yeah. So. And if you're doing something, if you're going to be using a pendulum outside, uh, if you can, if it, the weather permits, uh, take your shoes off, socks off, and kind of squish your toes into the ground. Uh, because the earth is very grounding for you. So, uh, and you can also pull, uh, act on and um, pull on earth energies to help you with your, your divination. Okay. 
All right, so first thing you want to do with your pendulum is you don't want to use it right away when you've bought it or when you've made it. You still want to let it connect with your energies, um, just like you would any crystal that you would buy. And if you've ever taken one of my crystal classes, one of the first things I do is you clear it. Um, and so you would set it on selenite, you would put it in brown rice, uh, you could put it outside in the earth, uh, let all those negative energies clear. The second thing you'd want to do is let's keep it with you for a minimum of seven days. Uh, the longer the better before you use it, seven to ten days is a really good time frame. After that you can start connecting with your pendulum. And like Doc said, the first thing you would do is ask it your yes and no. And you have to do this before every time of using it because your yes and no can change. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. Depends on what entity you're connecting with. Exactly. That yes and no will change. Um, so what you want to do is hold it and you want a very short string. Uh, a very short connection. Now it doesn't matter how long your chain is or your string is, but you want to hold it so that there's not much. That way the energy going through your arm and into the pendulum doesn't have to work so hard. Exactly. It's kind of like living in a neighborhood with Wi-Fi and if you're at the end of the block you're getting less Wi-Fi mm, than the person at the front of the block. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. So hold your chain, come back to me camera, there we go, to hold your chain at a very short level and then hold it over your hand and it's going to move a little bit and why is that the reason for that is there because of the movement of the earth you're going to get i believe it's like a two percent or two degree movement of the pendulum anyway okay so uh, just keep that in mind if you find that when you hang it down and it doesn't stay there that's because of the the, the rotation of the earth can also be just your hand shaking. Um, I true. do have my elbows on the table, which will help me steady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although in proper pendulum, you should not be <laughs> doing anything. You should actually yeah. be free. Um, but for the sake of recording, we are going to do it with elbows on the table, so that way it's a little bit um, steadier. Um, and I connect pretty well with pendulums anyway, so sometimes you'll connect with the energy of the table mm -hmm. versus yourself. So that's why you have no arms or anything on the now, table. Now I find that when I'm using my pendulum, that if I have a cushion mm -hmm. underneath my elbow, that kind of helps to steady me. Yeah, yeah. So the next thing is to find your yes and no. Again, all you do is hang it over your hand and you say, show me my yes. As you can see, the pendulum is going in a counterclockwise circle, and that is my yes. It always has been my yes, probably always will be my yes. But you still have to ask it every time, every time. before you every use time. it. You can then ask it to stop or grab it, it doesn't make any mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. And then you say, show me my no. My no always has been and always will be going back and forth. And it's pretty strong today. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of that is probably due to the fact we're out here in nature. We're out we're in nature. At, we are uh, connected. Connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's my own personal pendulum. Again, I made this one, so I am very connected with it. Uh, my energy is very strong in it, so it, is, it will be stronger than some of the other ones in the box if I were to pull them out. And one, and one of the things that Indigo uh, had uh, said earlier is, and it's one of the things that I, I do whenever someone gifts me a, a crystal or a pendulum or something of this nature, I don't automatically use it. I carry it on my person with me for a, about seven to ten days. I want it to be uh, adjust, adjusted to my energy. I don't want other people's energies on it. I cleanse it first and then I, I keep it with me at all times. Does it make any difference uh, if you use a, a, a bob that is made from lapis or clear quartz or rose quartz? No, it makes no difference. As a matter of fact, I have this one, which is a necklace of mine, uh, and I do wear it regularly and I just pull it off and I can do a divination with this as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with crystals, one of the main 
um, kind of rules that a crystal will have is don't let anybody else touch your crystals. Yeah, you shouldn't allow Especially anybody. Especially a divination yes. device. And whether it be a pendulum, whether it be a crystal ball, whether it be an actual crystal, unless you are a crystal reader like myself, and are using them for um, oracle purposes, don't let anybody touch your crystals. Just one of a, a, a huge rule of mine. Very good rule. You know, one of the uh, and you don't hear about it much uh, today, and I don't. I think pendulum use is becoming uh, a little more common than it has been in recent years. But one of the things that you can use a pendulum for is uh, working with uh, healing. Um, if, let's say for instance, you are working with an individual with, um, uh, let's say uh, they're having stomach ulcers, uh, and you're doing some energy work with them and it doesn't seem like the energy is clearing, you can use a pendulum over the stomach to see if you, there are some energies that still need to be cleared. Now the important thing is you have to use the pendulum over an individual who does not have stomach ulcers so that you know what the true energy of a healthy organ is. Or you can do the yes no question. You can do the yes no questions yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, the using the pendulum uses three things to get an answer. And that is weight, gravity, and energy. Mhm. Mm Absolutely. It's a very simple um, formula. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the weight of the pendulum, the pendulum. Mm -hmm. which uses the gravity mm -hmm. and the energy of you to get an answer. Uh, and that's really all it is. It's very simple. And, and the important thing for uh, using pendulums for divination is to not ask complicated questions. They should be as simple as they possibly can be. Mm -hmm. um, yes, no, yes, only. Yes, no, mm -hmm. as, as much as possible. Now, if the pendulum shakes, if you ask it a yes, no question and the pendulum just sits there and really shakes, that is undecided. That means your subconscious does not know. Or it may be unwilling to, to give the answer. Or will, unwilling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are some pendulum mats that you can buy commercially. There is a direction for ask another time, mm -hmm. try again. Yep. So um, we don't always get the answers that we want uh, using uh, divination, whether it be crystal balls or pendulums or things of this nature. So, um, but pendulum is an easy way. The nice thing about pendulums, you, as Indigo said, you can use it as a uh, wear it as a necklace. Um, put it in your pocket. Um, some people say that if you're going to carry a, a pendulum with you, you should keep it in a, a pouch to protect mm -hmm. it. So uh, these are all very important things to do um, when you're using a, a pendulum. Mm -hmm. But a pendulum is a, is a simple, easy way to uh, get answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's your friend, so oh, yes. you know, like any friend, like Doc said, you know, have respect for it. Keep, um, you know, take care of it. Um, again, don't let anybody else use it. Don't let anybody else touch it. Keep them in a bag. If you wear them, it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, again, mm -hmm. if someone says, "Ooh, pretty pendulum or pretty necklace," can I? No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no. yes. No. Yes. And just tell them why they can't touch it. You know. And the, the truth of the matter is, whether you're using tarot cards, oracle cards, pendulums, crystals, it doesn't make any difference. Those are your tools, and you don't want other people to um, contaminate them, really, if you will, with their energy, regardless of how high a level of vibration they might be vibrating. They're taking away your energy from that particular tool. They should always ask for permission first to touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should. And that doesn't always happen. And if it does happen, don't worry. You can simply cleanse the pendulum again, uh, keep it on you for seven to 10 days, allow it to integrate with your energy again. I always have two pendulums. That way if somebody does ha touch it, mm -hmm. I just can pull out my other one while this one is, is getting ready to work again. Yep, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, just like anything, uh, you can, if you have your own uh, library of uh, oracle cards, one day you might just simply feel, oh, I want to use this particular deck or that particular deck. Pendulums are the same way. 
maybe I want to use quartz today, tomorrow maybe I'll use uh, uh, something different. I'll use a wooden one or a, a clear crystal. Yeah, and I have some different ones in here. I've got uh, a wood pendulum that I have. And the nice thing about this one is it's chambered, which means it has an opening here. And you can put anything you want in there. Uh, a lot of times I will put in um, some sage, uh, maybe some selenite, uh, maybe some black tourmaline for protection. Uh, the selenite will clear the pendulum automatically. You won't have to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and you can change it out because it's just an open an open chamber. So I do like this one really well as, as well. And I like the fact that it's wood and it's natural. Very nice, very, very nice. And so if you go to purchase a, a pendulum, uh, try now your best not to get caught up in trying to find uh, which one is the right one for me. It will talk to you, yeah. it will come to you. And when you go and buy the pendulum, make sure it does work for you. Uh, if a pendulum doesn't move at all for you, that is not the one. And try a different one. And try one, you know, I, and with crystals I always tell people, buy the one that you are attracted to. The one that screams your name, the one that says, you can't walk away from me. But then if it still doesn't work for you, it, it's not for you. And the thing we have to keep in mind, as you well know, it, every crystal has consciousness. And if it chooses not to work for you, that is not the crystal for you. Mm -hmm. This is an, a lapis one. It kind of looks like a bullet. Um, so like I said, there's many, many different shapes, sizes of pendulums that you can buy. I've got a whole box here. You know, I got a really uh, large hematite one. And this one's oh, heavy. Yeah. Oh yeah. This one's very heavy. Um, one, also one of my favorite ones. I connect with the metals a lot. Uh, when I'm working with crystals and so I do like this as well and so if you're going to buy crystals or, or buy uh, pendulums and use them for uh, your personal use your divination purposes it's always nice to have two or three that you can switch to uh, sometimes you just don't feel like uh, uh, a crystal one you want a wood one the next time and uh, this way you have you have a, a variety to choose from We'll tell you guys, we're going to have a little plug here for our vending side. I do make these and sell them. So stop by our table uh, at one of our vending shows and pick one up if you'd like. Yep. The next vending show will be in Cedar Falls in Iowa. Uh, that's going to be the second weekend of March. Uh, that's going to be at the Cedar Falls Expo and Paranormal Show. Uh, so uh, we will be there, we'll be reading, we'll be vending, so if you happen to be in that area, please come in to see us, uh, say hello, we'd love to hear from you, and please subscribe to the channel. Also, we're going to be in Topeka this weekend. That's exactly right, we'll be up in Topeka, Kansas, and um, unfortunately we will not be vending there, but we will both be reading there as well. So. Uh, we're very busy, got a very busy schedule coming up. And yeah. This bears. weekend is Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the same way with Cedar Falls the following weekend, it's a Saturday and Sunday. So, so you'll see us on the road on Friday, because we'll probably do a recording on Friday on the way up. Even though it's yeah. not that long of a drive, we can probably do a little short one. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll do a short one. But uh, by all means, um, if you are enjoying this uh, channel, you enjoy what we're talking about, things we're talking about, please subscribe. And by all means, leave your comments. We'd love to hear your comments. And if there's any particular things, you would, uh, ideas that you would like us to uh, talk about, um, by all means, let us know. Like, subscribe, comment, uh, and then we are going to have a little special surprise for you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. Not going to say anything more. Uh, it's a super special surprise. Yeah. You guys will be excited yeah. uh, to see what we have coming up. Yep. So, All right. I believe that does it. That does so, it. We are so going to say goodbye. Goodbye. All you roamers, we will see you next time. All right. Take care now.